Thank you for joining us for today's Research Starts Here webinar. And thank you to the University of Winnipeg Research Office for bringing us all together today. This is the second in a series of webinars offered throughout the year to help researchers like you better communicate your expertise. It's a privilege to be here and I'm looking forward to connecting with you. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that while we are attending from various locations from the comfort of our own homes and offices, as a university community, we are gathered on ancestral lands on Treaty 1 territory. These lands are the heartland of the Métis people. The University of Winnipeg is committed to partnering with Indigenous peoples and expanding knowledge related to the rights and responsibilities of the peoples in this area. It is my hope that this is reflected in all of the stories that we share. For those of you who don't know me personally, my name is Jennifer Cox. I am communications lead for the university. In this role, I have the great privilege of helping you tell the stories behind your research. This is extremely satisfying work. The marketing and communications team has many decades of combined expertise, and we are always thrilled to help you share your story. Feel free to reach out to us anytime with your questions and your ideas. Today's workshop is all about sharing your expertise and achievements with local, regional, national, and international news outlets. It's an important way to help the general public, government agencies, donors, and funders understand the impact of your research and the importance of investing in current and future projects. This webinar is divided into three parts. Communicate your expertise, media interview prep, and a media release toolkit to help you better communicate the story behind what you are working on and why it's important to the community. We'll start by talking about how you can communicate your expertise and ensure that media know who you are and turn to you for your opinion on critical issues. To get us started, I asked Maggie McIntosh, education reporter at the Winnipeg Free Press, if she had any advice for you. She said, make connections with local journalists who have reported on your interests before and writers whose work you respect. Reach out to them by email about your latest research or to simply let them know what your area of expertise is. More often than not, they'll be flattered that you thought of them and interested in hearing more. The biggest takeaway that I took from what Maggie told me is that journalists are accessible. They want to hear your stories and get excited about what you're excited about. Once you've developed a relationship with a reporter, they will often come straight to you for your expert opinion. But that doesn't mean that you're on your own. The communications office is always available to help you. And if you haven't established those relationships yet, that's okay too. We, um, our full-time job is establishing those relationships. So we are happy to reach out and make connections. And we've already got a little bit of a pulse on what reporters are looking for what stories. So this is definitely an area that we can help you with. But want to let you know that reporters are very accessible and very interested in sharing stories that have an impact on the community. As reporters get to know you and your area of expertise, requests will likely come with very short notice. Um, anybody that's had experience with the media will notice quite quickly that they are always looking for information at the very last minute. So if you're really wanting to position yourself as an expert in an area, um, you really want to return emails to them promptly or phone calls. That said, it's their time sensitivity, it's not yours. You've got a lot going on and it's okay to ask for more time or more information before agreeing to an interview. It's also okay to say no if the request does not relate to your expertise. So if you do want to position yourself with the media and it is related to your expertise, our advice is to get back to them as fast as possible. Sometimes that does mean dropping things or rearranging your schedule a little bit. Um, but that said, it's always about sort of what's in it for you as far as is this going to drive forward your research? Is the topic that they're asking you to weigh in on something that's appropriate for you to weigh in on within the scope of the projects that you're working on? and um, what you want to highlight about your research. So that's just something to think about. So one of the ways that we can help to ensure the media knows how to find you is to add your profile to the University of Winnipeg Experts Guide. This allows media to find you by your field, your area of expertise, the languages you speak, and what types of media you're available for. Whenever we write a news story about your work, it will appear on your personal Experts Guide page. So it's a great way to showcase your work. When you are featured in news stories, please let communication staff know, or even when media reach out to you, even if the story hasn't come out yet. Uh, we like to know that this is happening so that we can monitor the output, so that we can direct relevant queries your way, and also so that we can promote your story on our website and social media channels. If you're not in the expert's guide and you want to be, 
Um, it's very easy to find. Just go to uwinnipeg.ca slash experts dash guide um, or even when you get your weekly communications bulletin emails, just scroll to the bottom and you'll see some resources and tools there with um, a link to updating your experts guide. And so you just have to fill in that form and we'll get you online. We know that media interviews can sometimes feel intimidating, especially if you're doing it for the first time or you don't speak with media often. So we turned to Dr. Ian Morrow and asked him if he had any advice. He is a good friend to the media. We hear him in the news quite regularly, and he's developed some very solid relationships with reporters in Winnipeg and beyond. So what he told us is this. He said, TV, radio, and print all have different vocabularies, different audiences, and require different strategies. But despite these media contours, speak from both your mind and your heart. Break free of the ivory tower and communicate in a way that your grandmother will understand. This is really solid advice. It takes a certain skill to pare down the complexity of your research to language that the average person understands, but doing so has a huge impact. Following on those same lines, I found this cartoon on Grammarly that being a bit of a communications nerd, I thought was kind of funny. Um, this group pictured is the Central Subcommittee Steering Group for the Facilitation of Brevity and Clarity of Language Usage in the User Provider Communication Interface, formerly known as the Plain Language Group, <laughs> or sort of the Plain English Group. Um, and I just thought that was funny, and especially in terms of academia, um, there's a lot of big words and 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 drawn out acronyms and such to um, describe some of the projects that are taking place um, in our community. and it's easy to get sort of weighed down by that. So just remembering to talk about your research in terms of how your work impacts the audience and why it's important to them. Um, they're likely not going to be experts in your field. So remembering to use short sentences and plain English and avoiding any of the jargon or technical terms that you tend to use every day in your regular work um, will help to ensure that your message is communicated and hopefully avoid being misunderstood or misquoted. It's a good idea to try to anticipate questions the reporter might ask and have some responses ready. So gathering facts, figures, and anecdotes to support your points is always very helpful going into the interview. So if you have any data, reports, statistics, or links to background information, um, have that on hand so that you can provide additional perspective on your research if um, possible. We asked Dr. Gino D'Astasio to weigh in. There are more than a few reporters in town that have him on speed dial, and he's very good at illustrating the importance of complex issues in a way that the average person can understand. This is his advice. Talk slow. Keep your points simple. Think of concise, short key points. Limit technical terms and focus on why people should care about the issue or finding. Brief conversational and non-technical responses make it easier for a non-academic to understand and care about your research and be prepared. You might talk for 10 minutes only to have a blip appear on the news. He says live interviews can be unnerving, but they're important nonetheless. One of his key tips is to read the host. Live TV and radio is all about short bursts, so it's important to be aware of the host's need to either interject with a probe or to move on. Just to put him on the spot and to give you an example, I'm going to share a clip from a recent interview with Richard Cloutier at Global News where I think he does a great job of explaining his project in a way that really matters to the community. Is this a case study on how neighborhoods can really transform themselves? Absolutely, Richard. It's really about a larger Canadian study looking at neighborhood change over the last 50 years. And I've said this many times already that to me, West Broadway within Canada is one of the most unique diverse neighborhoods that we have in this great country of ours and it's a place where resiliency and hope has taken on challenges over the last number of uh, decades to you know some days win the battle some days not but overall it's a great great place your quote or soundbite will likely be very brief so emphasizing those key points increases the chance that they will be included in your story uh, I always recommend that you write down one to three key points before the interview and not that you want to be reading them because you don't you know your stuff and um, you don't want to be trying to read it but um, just having that in your back pocket so that you've taken some time to think about what those key points are will help you to continue to bring the interview back to um, the conversation that you care about 
One thing we do ask is that when you go into an interview, ask the journalist to identify you in the story as being from the University of Winnipeg. This allows our communications department to track coverage and it increases the reputation of our university. So we, we do um, really try to track all of the stories that are being told out there about University of Winnipeg faculty and departments and exciting events that are happening. So just mentioning the University of Winnipeg in that article brings it up within the data that we are tracking. Sometimes during an interview, you might be faced with a question that you don't know the answer to. Don't answer questions that you feel unqualified to answer. It's perfectly okay just to say, that's not my area of expertise, or I can't answer that question because, and give a short, concise reason why you can't answer before returning back to your main points. Um, the one thing we do recommend is that you don't just say no comment because that can sort of leave too much up in the air and create some havoc that's not necessary. Um, if you just don't feel ready to answer the question, but you think that you could answer it, it's okay to ask for some more information and offer to call back. Even 15 to 30 minutes can help focus your thoughts. I mean, of course, this isn't possible in a live interview, uh, but a lot of times, even before a live interview, they're going to have a pre-interview to sort of make sure that you're all on the same page about what you want to talk about. So you usually will have a chance to gather your thoughts and focus your answers in a way that is going to point to your research. If you ever get in a situation where you feel really stuck and maybe it is a live interview and you can't just pause and say, can we, you know, do this later or can we <laughs> start over? Um, a bridging technique is a great way to move from an answer to a message. So if you're asked a question that makes you uncomfortable or if you want to bring the interview back to your main point, a bridging technique is a way to refocus your messaging. So some examples of bridging phrases are, however, it's important to look at, or here's the real issue, or it's important to remember or let me put this in perspective by saying, so rather than get tied up in knots in the question that they're trying to maybe drag you into, um, that you don't wanna get dragged into, just taking control back. So if you have some of those bridging phrases in your pocket, it's a way to sort of help pivot very quickly when you need to. Another thing that is perfectly okay is a little bit of silence. If the interview pauses, you do not need to fill that silence immediately. Um, give yourself a moment to focus on what you want to say in short, understandable chunks and provide your answer. Um, even better, if the interview is not live, you can ask to restate your answer if you're not satisfied with your initial response. Um, but in a live interview, um, that little moment of silence might be all you need to collect your thoughts, so don't be afraid of it. In TV interviews, your demeanor, gestures, voice, and body language are all important. If you're being interviewed from home, you'll want to think about your background. Some colorful art or a solid wall is much better than a large open room with lots of clutter, for example. But what's really key is to be yourself. And I know that's easier said than done, especially if you're at all nervous. But if you can keep your answers conversational and authentic, it has a huge impact. You've put so many hours into your research because you're passionate about it. And when that passion shows, it resonates with people. If you watched Dr. Jamie Cedro being interviewed recently about the She Walks With Me project, you'll know what I mean. Her face lit up when she talked about the mums being impacted by this work. I think that's really important. We're now heading into the final portion of today's webinar and I just want to talk to you briefly about media releases and let you know that we do have tools for you available on our website to help you through that process and prepare to get the most out of your media releases. University of Winnipeg communications staff are always on hand to help you. We develop pitches, news releases, media advisories, and any other materials intended for the media. So don't be afraid, don't hesitate to turn to us for any of your media needs. Um, some things that you might want to think about before putting together a media release or before putting together a request for a media release is what is the purpose? Is it to promote a book launch or a new program or an upcoming event? Um, are you hoping to generate media coverage for research funds? Funding? Are there partner organizations or funders that you want to have included in your media release? Um, let us know so that we can make sure to cover all of those bases. Um, also, something to think about is timing. So if we, if we can tie a story with any sort of current events or anything um, that is happening that will just maybe make it that much more important to the general public, um, we try to do that. So yeah, thinking about timing ahead of time is also really important. 
The University Communications Department offers media relations support that should cover most, if not all, of your needs. That said, we do know that there might be times when you feel compelled to draft a media release and you need a bit of help. So we've created a media release toolkit for you. This is available on our website. It's designed to help guide your content development. Uh, we know that media releases are very different from the research papers and essays that uh, academics typically write. So communication staff are here to help you. We are here to provide advice and help you successfully share your story. We do not expect you to write your own media releases by any means. Um, just give us the information in bullet form and we'll ask you for any follow-up questions, any follow-up questions for any more information that we need. But if you do have a need to write a media release, those tools are there. That's the end of my presentation. I want to thank you all for being here today and for your interest in learning how to connect with media. I know that it um, can feel a little bit nerve wracking when it's new, but it's also very exciting. So if there's any way that we can help you, just please get in touch. Let us know if you're contacted by the media, if you want to be contacted by the media, if you have an idea for a story, well, we would love to connect with you. And um, just my final word is that you know your stuff. You're great at it. You have put countless hours of research and time and energy into the projects that you're working on. So just um, to hold on to that confidence and speak from your heart and you'll do great. Thanks so much.